Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Mocha A. Transmission Opel Mocha gives it a Korean origin. Firstly, there is no Holdex clutch in the rear axle drive, but there is a simple electromagnetic clutch, as is usual on cars from the east. Secondly, you will not find the wonderful F17 gearbox here. It is replaced by the Korean D16, a clone of the old and durable F16 gearbox, which was proving itself very well. Otherwise, everything is more or less typical. The 6040 as an automatic transmission is offered in tandem with the A14 NAT and A18 XER engines, and the 6-speed M32 RR is for diesel engines and supercharged gasoline engines. By and large, such combinations are even better than those of Astra J. In any case, the automatic transmission with the 1.8-liter engine is noticeably less loaded, which means that there are fewer problems. Europeans and our rare owners of cars with a 1.6-liter engine live much calmer with simpler and reliable Korean mechanics. The mechanical part of the transmission, scaffs, sweet joints, carton shaft are quite reliable. Requires regular attention outboard bearing of the drive of the right axle shaft. On urban cars it gets too hot with close exhaust, after which lubricant flows from it. There have been quite a few cases when this note starts to make noise at runs of less than 50,000 km, so it is worth checking it out when buying. The propeller shaft and rear gearbox for all-wheel drive vehicles also do not require special attention, but the Borg Warner next track clutch on all the cars may already make itself felt. With the active use of all-wheel drive, which is quite typical for us for windy operation, the amount of contamination from wear products inside the body becomes critical after 3-4 to four years of operation. So most likely a bulkhead of this unit with cleaning and lubrication will be required. And often also with the readjustment of the clearance in the clutch package. The clutch package itself is usually quite functional, but if you start the situation, the insulation of the electromagnet and the bearings with old seals will be damaged. If the car also drove in deep water, there will be porridge inside, and it may be necessary to restore the housing and bearing seats of the unit, and of course, change the electrics and clutches. More often, the clutch control unit fails. It is located under the bottom, next to the clutch, and suffers a lot from dirt and moisture, but its problems are usually solved quite simply by cleaning the connectors and replacing the wiring. D16 and M32 manual gearboxes are quite reliable. Of course, the D60 has oil flowing from all the slots and the M32 may have problems with the bearings of the output shaft and the differential, but this doesn't happen so often. Any motors do not have such torques to cause problems, if you do not get carried away with tuning turbo engines. Just make it a rule to change the oil in the manual transmission every 60,000 and regularly check the plug magnet for damage and level. The automatic transmission of the ST40 series is a rather problematic design, but in combination with an atmospheric 1.8-liter engine it works well, and even with a 1.4 turbo it feels good. But internal structural defects inevitably reveal themselves after a run of 100 to 1,500,000 km. In any case, jerking when switching 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th indicates problem with the wave spring, which will result either in the repair of the 21, 35, 50 drum or in the installation of a repair insert. If you ignore the first call, then most likely the entire planetary gear 21, 35, 80 and a bunch of different hardware will go for replacement. The solenoid kit also has a limited life, as does the hydraulic plate and bushings. Well, of course, the blocking pad for the gas turbine engine wears out. So with the runs of more than 150,000 km, feel free to count on a box overhaul. In an ideal world, it can travel 250 and even 300,000 km without serious intervention, but here you know it's cold most of the year, hot in summer, dirty and traffic jams in cities. And what Russians doesn't like driving fast? Even if he bought a car with a dead naturally aspired 1.8 liter engine squeezed by the ecology to a complete loss of dynamics. In general, there is no chance to drive 300,000. Just keep 100 and 150,000 rumbles ready. Most likely, contract units will not help you. Opel Mocha's engine have all been known for defense of the brain for a long time and there will be no special surprises here. The most common worker is, of course, the naturally aspired 1.8 A18XER Aka Z18XER. There is a belt in the timing drive, there are phase shifters, a variable lens of the intake manifold, a collector and a water oil heat exchanger. The main problem of these engines is long regular oil change intervals, poor manufacturing quality of a number of components and especially of the cooling system. 
The rest is a very pleasant engine in every sense, in terms of resource and power. True, with the stock Euro 6 firmware it pulls the car so-so, but there are alternative firmware which may not give extra power, but will add traction at low at medium speeds. And spanning this motor will become much more fun. The 1.4 turbo A14 NET engine is much less common. This motor is already completely different, although it has the same strength, 140. The relatively low popularity is due to two factors. The lack of a complete set of this motor with all-wheel drive and automatic transmission and concerns about the turbine. It is a pity that the fears are so great. The thrust and dynamics with this engine are noticeably higher and the consumption is lower. But the difficulties in general are the same. Long recommended all change intervals and low quality of manufacture of some units. Diesel engines are not popular at all, although the Isus Circle 1.7 liter series engine is considered one of the most successful engines and is widely used on machines of other brands. The naturally aspired 1.6 liter engine is structurally the same as the 1.8 liter. This means that it has very little power in moment, a little less resource, no dynamics at all. So don't regret that we have not officially sold the cars with it, it's okay, we don't need such a motor. Aspired 1.8 liter engine, not bad at all. But when buying a car with it, you need to pay attention to a number of systems. First, when starting, pay attention to the tapping of phase shifters. Long output of phasic to the operating mode indicates the poor condition of the control valves, contamination of their screens, low pressure in the oil line, or failure of the regulator coupling themselves. Carefully check the engine for oil leaks. There is an oil water heat exchanger under the exhaust manifold, and the gaskets in it are prone to leaks. In case of failure, the oil enters the antifreeze, clogging the cooling system and eventually knocking out all of these rubber elements. With relative luck, the oil simply pours into the ground and onto the collector. It is unlikely to burn out, but the smell will be unpleasant, and the loss of oil in itself is not a gift. Indirectly, such a nuance suggests that the owners do not warm up the engine during cold starts. This unit is sensitive to the operating oil pressure, while turning the engine cold is a sure way to speed up overhaul. Leaks of oil seals and cylinder head covers are quite typical. Here the crankcase ventilation system is organized very simply, the old-fashioned way. And it clogs up regularly, and it works so-so. Machines with a PCV well in the system are found, but not often. The motors are noticeably drier, but the well itself sometimes fails, increases oil consumption for waste and organized contamination in the intake manifold. The increased noise of the engine after 60-80 thousand runs is not uncommon. The valve clearances here are not as stable as in many other cars, and the check intervals should be reduced at least to the same 60 thousand mileage. Often just one or two valves are required, and the, and the operation is inexpensive. The resource of the collector is quite decent. If you do not abuse winter starts and auto heating, then it will survive up to 200 thousand kilometers, especially if the car hasn't eaten oil. Another surprise awaits you in the intake manifold in the form of geometry change flaps and the fur coat of oil sludge. The damper switch, their drive brakes, and the sludge doesn't allow the motor to breathe deeply. In general, after hundreds of thousands, an operation to remove and completely revise the unit is recommended, otherwise you will not have to wait for full dynamics from the motor. Electrical difficulties in motors have not been yet encountered, except that the ignition module is rather weak. But potentially the wiring is not the most successful, the brains overheat and a very unpleasant problem appears with broken contracts in the ceramic board. On older Astra age with these engines this happens, but perhaps I was in vain scaring you and these problems were fixed. But bursting expansion tanks are a sign of the model. The cooling system itself also leaks frequently and strongly. The reason is that this motor has a rather high operating temperature, this affects both the life of the piston group and the life of the plastic parts. If you want to reduce the risks, put a thermostat from A16 LET motors, 19 degrees of operating temperature will improve the dynamics of the machine after warming up and reduce the risks. The thermostat of the A18XER itself is designed for 106 degrees and is prone to loss of tightness, so over time the operating temperature drops to the same 90 degrees, but the warm-up time also increases, which is not good at all. The turbocharged A14 NET is built on a completely different block with a timing chain and is different from the Aspired. But the difficulties are approximately general, except that there is only one phase regulator. The chain has a resource of about 100,000 km, but the replacement is more expensive than about. And of course, there is a turbine. 
you shouldn't be afraid of turbines, there is a slight tendency to cracking of the hot part, but nothing more. You just need to be careful in the paddles, especially when reversing. The boost control valve after hundreds of thousands of mileage should be replaced preventively in order to avoid difficulties with underblowing and overblowing. The piston doesn't hold detonation and pressure surges poorly, but otherwise it is quite good. Not prone to coking and withstands power with a small margin. Unfortunately, bad gasoline, dirty radiators and intercoolers can have dire consequences. The coolant system here is also rather weak, but basically everything is bypassed with a leaking expansion tank and pump. In general, the motor is also very reliable, but it must be borne in mind that it requires more qualified maintenance than any atmospheric one, and replacing the chain is not cheap and it is not in the maintenance regulations. On this, information about the problems of Opel Mocha E is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.